Hi, this is your host Abhin Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Gedan Castellan, VP of Marketing at Tecton. Gedan, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Swapnil. It's my pleasure to be here. It's my pleasure as well to host you again. Uh, this time, once again, uh, the Apply Rexis conference is coming up. We'll talk about the conference. But before we talk about it, I want to quickly talk about, you know, it's been a while since we talked to each other. So talk about, uh, you know, real-time machine learning, what kind of adoption you're seeing there, what are the challenges that are there, or how it has evolved since we talked last time. At Tekton, we are focused on helping companies deploy machine learning to production, right? So essentially, uh, use machine learning to power new applications and services. This is what we call real-time machine learning. Uh, we think that really for machine learning to deliver its value, it should be running in production. It should be real time. That's how you can make predictions at massive scale and make them very fast to keep up with the volumes of data that you're generating. However, what we're seeing in the enterprise, just like a couple of years ago, was that the majority of machine learning is still very much batch in nature. Like today, machine learning is mostly used to complement existing analytics processes and, and basically to populate dashboards for human consumption, for humans to make a decision. And, and, and that's really not realizing the full value of machine learning because you, you're still relying on human scale, human speed. Uh, and really, if you look at the cloud native companies, think about companies like Google or Facebook or Amazon, they are deploying machine learning in production and making real-time predictions to automate the simple decisions and to be able to make those decisions much faster and at much higher scale than a human ever could. And we think that that's the path forward for the majority of enterprises. However, that, that path is also complicated for an enterprise because it means that all of your analytical data now has to make its way to production. You need to have the processes to build the data pipelines for real-time data. You need to have the processes to get models to production. There's also some organizational changes required. Like you have a team of data scientists and they behave like scientists, right? Like they try to do ex experimentation and exploration and they don't necessarily build production level code. They're not software engineers. And so that's also a change that needs to happen. How do you get these, these data science organizations to bridge that gap and to start building production quality code and, and adopt the processes to allow them to iterate quickly on production machine learning. So those are the changes that are making that adoption of real-time machine learning really complicated. That is what we're working on with customers. And you were asking about the changes since the last time we spoke. Well, definitely one thing that we can see at Tekton is um, that uh, a rapidly increasing number of enterprises are embarking on this journey. Um, and it is becoming easier over time. Why? Because we have better tools, uh, tools like Tekton, but there's many other products in the MLOps ecosystem. And, 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 uh, and the users, uh, the data scientists, now oftentimes complemented by ML engineers, are getting better at the processes. So this transition is happening. Uh, it is taking a little bit of time, as, as any transition does. Uh, but, but at Tekton, we can definitely see that, that it's, it's becoming, it's, it's accelerating. Right? And more and more companies are going through this transition. Excellent. Thank you so much for explaining that. If I may ask to ask, and this question can be totally either a stupid or dumb question, is that uh, are we looking at, you know, real-time machine learning might become the, you know, the way of doing machine learning, or there are specific use cases where real-time machine learning makes more sense, or that's where it's ideal? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, any time that there is an opportunity to power an application with with machine learning predictions, this is where we'll talk about real-time machine learning, right? And so the use cases, I mean, there's, there's like an infin infinite number of use cases. Uh, but I'd just like bring up a few examples just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, right? So um, on the more conventional use cases, like you could be an insurance company or a bank and you would like to do loan underwriting or insurance policy underwriting in real time. Uh, normally, that's a process that goes through an underwriter and can take a few days. With machine learning, at least for the majority of cases, like the simple cases, you can now assess the risk, like the risk of default or the risk of an accident if it's an insurance policy. You can now assess that risk in real time based on the data you have. And that could be the data you have 
about the customer. It could be data that you're pulling from public sources. But that information will allow you to, to build a pretty good risk profile in real time and make a real-time underwriting decision. And so if you're an insurance customer and you can get uh, a policy in, in segments, that's a much better experience than if you have to wait for a few days. Uh, another example would be if you use Uber Eats and you want to order a meal and like First, you're not sure which restaurant to order from. This is where a Rexis type use case would come in. Like a recommender system could be like, based on your preferences, we think that you would like these five restaurants and can make a recommendation. And then when you need to generate an ETA for the delivery of the meal, that's actually a really complicated problem to solve because you need to know how long does the restaurant normally take to prepare the meal? How busy are they right now? Uh, how long does it normally take to drive from the restaurant to your place? How bad is the traffic situation? Do I have any drivers in the vicinity? And so there's like all these data sources that you can pull in to make an ETA prediction. Um, and that's another example where real-time machine learning is being used to provide a better end user experience. Uh, so these are just a few examples, but, but there are like countless examples out there. Uh, fraud detection is a very common one. Uh, recommender systems, very common. Real-time pricing, real-time risk assessment. Uh, these are some of the use cases that we commonly see. Excellent. And also, thanks for creating a segue to my next question, which is, uh, and you touched upon that when you were giving example of Uber was recommender systems. What are they specifically? And, you know, once again, talk about their adoption and the reason they are becoming popular. Yes, yes. So recommender systems are a subset of machine learning use cases. And they typically are applied when there are a wide range of options that can be applied to a user. Uh, so I just throw out a few examples. But if you're on Spotify and you're trying to figure out what you may want to listen to, there are like thousands of songs. And how do you choose the next one? Right? Well, a recommender system can be like, based on your personal preferences, we believe that you will like these 10 songs and can make that decision much easier for you. Uh, another example is if you're shopping on Amazon, there are, again, like thousands of products to choose from. How do I know which one I'm going to select? And here's another area where a recommender system can make that recommendation. Uh, so these are just a couple of examples, but, but they're like very specific problems. They're very common. Uh, Netflix, for example, would be another great place where you would apply this type of solution. And they are more complicated because now you have to factor in the attributes of the user, like what are your personal preferences? Like, for example, Summer, we think you would like this type of food, right? Based on what you've done in the past, based on your profile. And they have to match those personal preferences with the attributes of the things you're recommending, right? So uh, am I categorizing the attributes of this song appropriately so that I'm recommending it to the people who are going to like this song? And you have to match those two things to make the best parts possible recommendations. So recommender systems are an inherently more complicated class of problems where the data aspects are particularly challenging. And this is an area where Tekton, uh, you know, we focus on data for machine learning, where Tekton is, is very, very useful, but where customers still have a lot of questions on what's the best way to implement it, what's the best way to operationalize recommender systems. Excellent. Uh, can you talk a bit about what are some of the biggest challenges when we talk about uh, recommender system, of course, getting right data as you are giving out Uber, you know, there are yeah. so many variables, you know, the traffic, whether they are drivers, how long it takes for that restaurant to prepare things, uh, what is the time of the day, whether it's like Thanksgiving or, you know, other, any other vacation. Yeah. So talk a bit about what are the, or it could also be, you know, just the uh, technologies are not available or they are not enough data scientists or engineers or developers. So, so on the challenges of recommender systems, right? So recommender systems are particularly challenging um, because of a number of reasons. But like the first one is you have to integrate a lot of different data sources to come up with a prediction, right? So going back to the Uber Eats example, you're dealing with a lot of different types of data. You're dealing with um, real-time traffic information, uh, batch data on how often, how, like how long does it typically take for a restaurant to prepare a meal. Uh, you're looking for uh, data on driver availability. And all of that data has to come together to generate one ETA. And so that's, that's one complexity, just integrate, integrating all these different data sets to come up with a prediction. Uh, the second challenge is when you're dealing with recommender systems, there is 
a big advantage to moving from batch to real time data, right? So, like to to explain this in, in simple terms, uh, if you're on Netflix and you're trying to decide which movie to watch next. Netflix will make a recommendation. It would be like based on your preferences. We think you will like these five movies. And those recommendations can be based on historical data. Like it could be like, hey, Swapner, so like yesterday you watched this movie and you liked it. And so we think based on that, you're going to like this. But that recommendation is going to be even better if it factors in real-time data, like what have you been browsing for the past few seconds? What kind of things have you been looking for? And to do that, you now need to integrate not just the data from a day ago, but you need to integrate data from right now, from just a few seconds ago. And that makes it even much more complicated because now you're dealing with streaming data, real-time data. Uh, that real-time data could be like location information. Which location is this request coming from? And and um, and, and so that increases the level of complexity in, in deploying recommender systems. And that's another area where many of our users struggle, but I think it's, it's, it's a pretty widespread problem in the industry that many people have questions on. Excellent. Once again, thank you so much. Now let's talk about the conference. Uh, first of all, talk a bit about uh, the, the name, Apply Itself, what does it mean? And then since it, this time it's also uh, Rex Systems, uh, Rexis. So, so explain the term and uh, the focus of the conference and uh, what should we expect there? Yeah, 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 all great questions. So Apply is a conference on data for real-time machine learning, for operationalizing machine learning models. Uh, it is a conference that is by practitioners for practitioners. So it's hosted by Tekton, but it's really not at all a vendor event. Like it's not about giving the Tekton pitch. This is a conference where we invite people who have done it, who have operationalized real-time machine learning in the past, who have best practices to share, ideas to share on tools of choice, architectures, like which architecture work best, how to organize a team. Like they have practical experience, experience and they share that experience with the audience. Uh, to your question on the name, why do we choose Apply? Well, because we're all about operationalizing things. And so think about the, comp the, the concept of applying changes. We're applying things to production. And so that's why we're, we're calling it Apply. And in this instance, Apply Rexis. Why? Because it's focused on recommender systems. And I'll give a little bit of history on Apply too, because I think it's interesting. The, the first one we did was about a year and a half ago. And we, you know, we've been very engaged in MLOps communities. That's, that's our space. And we, we, we just see every day that people are hungry for knowledge. They're like really trying to figure this out. It's complicated. And there's not much information available out there. And so we came up with this idea of, hey, what if we did this conference and like maybe people would be interested in, in hearing from their peers and other people who have done it and, and getting that knowledge. Um, and when we first organized it, we were hoping to maybe get a thousand people sign up. That was like a stretch objective. Like, hey, if we get 500 people signing up, we'd be happy, but like maybe we can get to a thousand. And we actually got 7,000 people signing up, uh, which we were blown away by. And I think it's really... It's really because of the quality of the speakers and the information that, that is shared at the event. Uh, and so seeing this interest, we did, you know, we did a few smaller ones. We did another big one this year where we had 9,000 people, so even bigger, uh, where we had some, uh, we also had some in-person meetups, which I think were great because, you know, virtual is, is super scalable and allows you to reach a lot of people, which is great. But like people also want that personal contact. And so we did in-person physical meetups in New York City and San Francisco. Uh, those were very well received. And then the event that we are doing now uh, on December 6th uh, is really, uh, we're not going to have the physical get together because we can't do that every time. Like, you know, there's an investment and it's more complicated. But, but I think the theme is really great because recommender systems are what, you know, are, are a particularly challenging area and and getting a lot of interest from users. And so uh, that, that's why we're focusing this one on, on recommender systems. Uh, we have about 10 speakers lined up. Uh, I'll just give a few highlights because I think we have some really cool speakers. So we have Katrina Nee from Slack, and she's going to talk about the Slack recommend API. And so if you think about you know Slack, the way they use recommender systems, it's like, 
imagine you want to start a direct message, uh, Slack will recommend who you may want to include in the recipients of that direct message. Uh, or if you're joining a new Slack environment, like they could recommend which channels you may want to subscribe to. Uh, so re recommend those, you know, recommendations are, are used like all over the place in Slack. And they build this, this great backend engine to make uh, real-time recommendations available via API to any software engineer at Slack, which has made the adoption of recommender systems uh, way, way easier for those engineers at Slack. So she's going to talk about that. Uh, and then another talk I want to highlight is Yulong from uh, ByteDance, uh, which is also the company behind TikTok. And we all know the TikTok recommendation engine, right? Very well known, uh, great at recommending which videos you may want to see. And they're going to talk about their, uh, their recommender systems, specifically about Monolith. And Monolith is a system for online training, and influencing in recommender systems. And so they just published a paper on Monolith, I think about a month ago, and here they're gonna present and, and give their views on that system. Um, um, so those are two highlights, but uh, you know we have 10 speakers, it's a, it's a half day event, uh, entirely free to, uh, to attend. If anybody's interested, they can sign up at events.tecton.ai. Gita, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, not only talk about the company and kind of refreshed our memories about the adoption of real-time machine learning and sharing some of the not only use cases, the problems, the challenges are there, and also the, the conference. Once again, thank you so much, and I look forward to talk to you again soon. Hope we should do it more frequently, not every year. So thank you. I would love to. I would love to do it sooner next time. But thank you so much, Swapner. It was a pleasure speaking with you. <laughs>